Welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get Plans Mod working in Minecraft 1.12.2 because I recently figured it out. It took me literal years. Although to be fair, most of the years I wasn't even trying really. It was just me doing my own thing and yeah, life. But just recently I tried again and this time I successfully succeeded in doing so. So. Yeah, I'm gonna document the whole thing and put it into this one video. Enjoy. I'm gonna try to be as informative as possible um, while also having the personality of a non-informative guy. So just try to bear with me, and if you can understand what I'm saying, that's pretty good. Alright, so in this specific tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do this using Prism Launcher. And if you don't know what that is, that's basically an alternative launcher to the default Minecraft launcher. It launches Minecraft, it gets the job done, but it allows you to do it in multiple instances. This is it right here. And pretty much multiple instances means you can have, like, different presets of Minecraft, in a sense. You got multiple Minecraft directories. So for each of these on screen right here, this is all, like, a different set of mods, resources, packs, and worlds. This is the instance of Minecraft I use for the Birchland series, if you've been watching this channel. It's basically got less mods than this one, which I use for OP Realm. And, uh, yeah, this one right here, this is from a scrapped video, um, where I took a look at the Essentials mod. Um, maybe I'll release a clip from that at some point, but anyways, this right here, this is from an outtake of this section, this section of the video. I, I, I had a stroke on camera when I was talking, so it's gone now. I'm re-recording this. I'm just gonna remove this. But yeah, this will pretty much allow you to have multiple instances of Minecraft, which is extremely helpful when you're dealing with mods, because mods, they're very powerful. You don't want to accidentally load vanilla over a world with mods. That'll corrupt the world, probably. First thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to go and add an instance. And for Flans mod individually, we're going to be using version 1.12. Name this whatever you want. I'm just going to name this Flans mod 1.12.2 tutorial. And then as for groups, we're just going to put this in old Minecraft, but you'll probably have your own groups in here. And now we're going to scroll down right here. We're going to go down, we're going to scroll down to the mod loader section. We're going to select Forge here. And then we're going to select this version of Forge because this is the recommended version. So we have the mod loader in there, which is going to be very important because in case you didn't already know, Flans mod isn't just one mod, it's a group of mods. To load a group of mods, you're going to need a mod loader. Anyways, what all these mods are going to do these are all responsible for different parts of the big, the big modification to Minecraft. Some add vehicles, some add like the mechas and whatnot, some add the guns. It's all different jar files, which those are pretty much your mods. That's where it's, what we're going to get to in a minute here. But first you're going to go get them. I'm going to link them all down in the description, everything I used in this video, including a Prism Launcher installation link. First, we have got to get some mods because Forge, it's it's great. Having a having a, a mod loader is pretty amazing, not gonna lie. But I would probably recommend you get some mods because it's kind of just sitting there if you don't do that. Anyways, here we are on Kurt's Forge. Now I'm just gonna type in Flans mod. And here are our results right here. In this Flans game account, you're probably gonna want to get a lot of their packs here for the Flans mod because these this is like the official account pretty much. There are some fan-made add-ons, but this is personally where I recommend you get stuff. I'm not saying you can't try things, but hey, this is this will this will probably be much more stable. So what you're gonna want to do is you're just gonna go down and download all these. Do not do install unless you want to get the Curse Forge app, which I guess is a little better. I haven't tried that, so I can't really like assess. I can't really review that at all. So this tutorial is mainly focused on downloading the mods manually. The app allows you to do it automatically. Anyways, for this specific example, we're going to download the legacy mod and make sure you have the version for 1.12.2. We're going to download the file and then we're going to wait here. You don't, this is an ad pretty much for the app here. It's pretty clever advertising here. I can see how many people would get the app right here thinking they're gonna get the mod, but as you can see, there it is. It's downloading right there, it's a jar file. I'm gonna do a couple other ones as an example, so give me a minute here. All right, so I just finished downloading the mods. There is one more thing you're probably gonna want, and this is optional. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'd probably really recommend you do this, and that is get Optifine if you are working with really any version of Minecraft. If you have a mod loader, throw this on there. It's an old version of Minecraft. You can do something like maybe 1.13 onward. 
or whatever the lowest version of sodium is. For basically what I'm trying to say here, for more recent versions of Minecraft or more modern versions, use sodium. It's a lot more powerful for those versions, but Optifine is the way to go if you're looking at old Minecraft. So we're gonna hop on over to downloads here, and pretty much what this mod is going to do, this is going to make Minecraft run, like, but it's optimized pretty much. It's in the name fixes the game's code so it runs better. And when you are downloading mods, I would strongly, strongly suggest you be careful because right now I'm using an ad blocker. You don't see any ad right here. The only ad we're getting is this big white screen, but there tend to be a ton of viruses where you get mods. It's pretty crazy and I don't know how that's really legal. So just be careful or use an ad blocker. Probably the best route for you, but we're gonna download this now. All right, now this right here, going back to Prism Launcher, this is the folder for our new instance of Minecraft right here. As you can see, it's pretty empty. So I do believe you are actually gonna have to run this once in vanilla to make sure, you know, it actually starts up. It'll create all the folders in there for you. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Make sure you're using the correct version of Java too. I'm gonna have to fix that. So let's head right on in here. Just gonna go on over to edit right here and then settings under here. We're gonna check Java installation. Auto detect that. Gonna do some more technical things. Auto detect is probably the best way to go. And this is this right here, this long line of text, that's pretty much your directory. That's pretty much your file path to your Java installation. It's an exe file. I will link Java down below in the description because different versions of Minecraft require different versions of Java. And Java is pretty much the game's code. But anyways, let's try launching this again. And it still didn't work. I made a little bit of an oopsie right here. You're gonna wanna make sure, you, you know, you don't just click OK on this screen. You're gonna wanna click the correct version of Java. I believe this is the right one right here for this specific version of Minecraft. We're gonna close this, we're gonna launch it again, and hopefully it works. And yes, it does. It boots right up, as you can see. We can close this down now, now. All right, so that does work. Now, we're gonna go into the folder again, and as you can see, we have our .minecraft directory here. And here we are. This is all we need right here. And this, this folder right here, this mods folder, this is very, very important right here. We go in here, there's nothing in here. This is where we're gonna put those jar files that we got earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag them from the desktop and just put them all in here. And there we go. So now we have Optifine, we have the Titan content pack, we have the Apocalypse content pack, and the base mod, pretty much. This will be like, sort of like a host mod if you want. It supports all the other ones. And Prism Launcher can actually detect the mods in there too, like this right here. So if you go back, you right click here, go to edit, and go down to mods, here we are. So if you get this screen right here, that's good. It means the launcher sees these mods and is going to try to run them. You can also download mods straight from the launcher here. I personally wouldn't recommend, like, especially if you like you're new. I think personally me, I prefer to download them manually and then move the jar files over like you just saw. But if you want to try downloading them manually, by all means, it's just a different UI. It's actually pretty crazy that a launcher can do that. But anyways, there we go. Now it's time to boot the thing up. All right, and booting up the game, as you can see here, it looks a little different. We have this mysterious mods button and all of this right down here. That's how you know it's working. So if we go in here, as you can see, we have the Forge mod loader. That's what we got earlier. We have Forge, and then we have the good stuff, the Flans mod and the Flans Mod Apocalypse, and the Titan Pack. So that's how you know it worked. Now let's go into a new world here and test this bad boy out. I'm just gonna set the game mode to creative. We're gonna go to a super flat world. And just for a good time's sake, I'm gonna put this on Redstone Ready. And here we are, and I'm feeling a real wave of nostalgia. I'm not sure why it's so shadowy though, it's a little dark. It's probably because the settings have reset. That's a little bit of a trade-off is that when you have multiple instances of Minecraft, you'll have to go through each instance, pretty much, and fix your settings to your liking each and every single time. It's a little bit annoying, but I'm sure there are a couple tech nerds who can move some files around in the game directory to, like, I don't know, speed up the process a little bit, like copying it from instance to instance. I don't know, but I'm not used to this sensitivity. But as you can see, if we pull up the inventory, we have these arrows up here. And in here, we have everything we could possibly need. Again, I only got two. So there's not a whole lot of stuff in here. We got the mechas, and then down here, this is the apocalypse area. But it will add a ton more items the more packs you get. I will link everything you need down in the description right here. It's a very, very big mod too, but as you can see, we can spawn in a car. It's invisible, apparently. 
This is probably why you should get all the mods, pretty much, because uh, this might happen. This is just a test, but as you can see, the game clearly sees what we're doing here. Let's try spawning in a mecha. They're all invisible for some reason. It does seem like the blocks are coming in alright, though, but there we go. That's pretty much how you install it. I'm just going to do a little bit of research real quick. Give me a minute as to why this isn't, like, loading in all the entities and whatnot. 20 minutes later. Alright, so after a little bit of messing around with the mods, I decided to transfer all the mods from my other mod set, um, with this mod, over here, and it seems to work fine. I'm not really sure what was up with that with the vehicles not showing up. But this mod is old, remember. It's very buggy. It's filled with bugs. In fact, if you look in the water right here, the entity right there, that's a plane I just accidentally crashed in the water. That thing, that thing, you can clearly see it through the water. You can even see the texture a little bit almost, so yeah, it's filled with bugs. Unfortunately, there used to be an official site for the Flans mod, flansmod.com, but it's not working. It hasn't been working for years, I don't think, so the only way to get the mod is really off of CurseForge. But either way, I got the mod working, technically... It, this video, it does fit the title, okay? I showed you, I showed you how to get the mod to work. Um, this isn't a tutorial on how to debug the Flans mod and fix it. But, uh, yeah. Well, as you can see, it added a whole bunch of stuff. I transferred all the mods, remember, so we have the guns here. I would probably recommend you get as many of those content packs as you can, as they do all rely on each other. There is a simple parts pack somewhere in here that is used by a lot of the mods right here. I believe this is the majority of it, the part. So yeah, you won't get very far if you don't install your dependencies. But anyways, that just about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found it informative. Um, I know it was quite a breakthrough moment when I finally got the other mods to load. Anyways, if you enjoyed, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.